this time I'd like to invite up a <clears throat> special guest to help me out with this next part of the service, Mr. Pete Crowell. Would you please come forward and help me out? I have <clears throat> a very special task I, I, need, I need specifically from you. A couple weeks ago I found something, <clears throat> and uh, it's a very interesting app. It's amazing they make apps for everything. <clears throat> Pete, I'm going to ask you a few questions. You just answer it as uh, honestly as you're able, and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. How, how tall are you? Five, Five What is that in inches? That is 71. <laughs> oh, 71. Good for you. <laughs> how about your weight in pounds? Weight in pounds. 60 pounds. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, male or female? Um, <clears throat> uh, what, what, what year were you born, Pete? Oh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, next question, next question. How many cigarettes do you smoke a day? Zero. Okay, <laughs> good, 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 good. Uh, you graduated high school? Yes. Good. Um, do you believe you'll be married for the majority of your life? Yes. Good, good answer, good answer. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you have any relatives that have a history of heart disease? Not that I know of. Okay, good, good. No. Um, let's see. How many miles do you travel each month in an automobile, roughly? Just guess. Thousand. Thousand? All right, all right. Do you wear a seatbelt? Yes. All right. Uh, last two questions, two left. How many hours of sleep do you get a night usually? Seven. Okay. And uh, do you have any pets? No. Okay. All right. This is something called a, uh, this app is called Death Clock. And what you do... <laughs> is you enter in all your information and then based on what you tell it, it will figure out roughly when you are, uh, when you're supposed to, uh, you know, uh, kick it. So anyways, <clears throat> good news, good news. It says here your death age is 93. That's outstanding. And then you can watch it tick down right in front of you. <laughs> 69 years, 10 months, 20, 22 days, 9 hours, 58 minutes, 10 seconds, 9, Eight, seven. <laughs> it's one of the most depressing apps I've ever seen on a cell phone. You literally watch yourself die. I figure it's, I, th there's a reason to this. <laughs> what does this mean? This means we all have a death clock. Someday, no matter how old we are, how young we are, if we enter in our digits, we're all going to be told someday our number will be up. Now, this is kind of a fun thing. It can't be you know, too serious or anything, but it does make a point. Someday, our, our, our day is going to come, um, and there's nothing we can do about that. Pete, thanks for helping today. <laughs> so, with the knowledge that we have a numbered amount of days left in our life, that gives us a little bit of incentive, that gives us a little bit of pressure, that gives us a little bit of reason to want to make the most out of the days we have left, right? Yes, good answer. So, what I did was I selected a piece of scripture that's going to give us some insight from the Apostle Paul on how exactly we should try to live these limited days of our life left. On the screen, you're going to see a piece of scripture from the book of Ephesians. Ephesians 5, 15 through 17 says, Be very careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise making the most out of every opportunity because we live in a broken world. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. And when you take a really close look at this piece of Scripture, you say it starts off by saying, be very careful then how you live. Here's why. It matters to God. God didn't put you on this planet and then just say, go do whatever you want. God puts you on this planet and it specifically has a beautiful plan for your life. So we're called by Paul to be very careful to try to stick to that plan as well as we can. Now the scripture goes on in verse 16. It says, making the most out of every opportunity. And I think this is one of the most difficult parts of this scripture. It's instinctive to procrastinate. It's instinctive to say, there's tomorrow. Why not wait until then? Or next year might be a better year to serve the Lord. I'm pretty busy this year. The scripture disagrees. And it says, make the most out of every moment. If you can serve the Lord today, then serve the Lord today. 
If you could share the gospel with one of your friends at work or at school, there's no reason to wait. Make the most out of every opportunity. And the very end of this piece of scripture is very humbling. It says, understand what the Lord's will is. It means two things. It doesn't say understand what your will is. It also means you have to listen to God to understand what the Lord's will is. Listening to God is a very challenging thing. It involves becoming very still, very silent, and seeking out the Lord's voice in prayer, through scripture, through conversations with other believers. When you look for what the Lord's will is in your life, you're going to find out that God has a great plan for you. Now, He has a different plan for each and every one of you, but each and every one of your plans is outstanding. There's a piece of scripture in Jeremiah that discusses just how good this plan is. The scripture says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. You know, I had a conversation with one of the youth uh, a couple weeks ago. And we discussed this verse and, and the question came up, is, is this all written out for us? Are we basically living a life that God has engineered and no matter what we do, are we going to stick to it? Now that's a good question. And the answer is, it's not quite like that. God has made a beautiful plan for us. Now it's up to us to look for that plan and then it's up to us to follow that plan. It's kind of like an architect. An architect will draw beautiful plans for a building. Whatever, shopping mall, house, you name it. Then the architect will hand off the plans to construction people. It's then up to the construction people to build it. Now, the construction folks have options. They can follow the plans as closely as possible, and they're going to end up with a beautiful result. They're going to come up with exactly what the architects envisioned. Or they can follow the plan somewhat, and kind of make tweaks here, tweaks there. Now, it might turn out okay, but it might not. And it definitely isn't exactly how the architect envisioned. It's kind of exactly how God is with his plan. God's got this beautiful plan for us. The question is, are we going to follow God's plan, or are we going to follow our own? And that's a really good decision to think about as we're entering in 2012. Are you going to follow God's plan, or are you going to go solo without him? You know, I think if somebody found out they only had one year left to live, they'd live differently than they do now. I think if somebody found out in 2012 is your last year, they would change a few things from how they lived in 2011. I just think that's instinctive. I think maybe, uh, maybe they would they do more things that they normally were afraid of. You know, they'd be kind of, yeah, what do I have to lose? <laughs> I'm going to die anyways. I might as well live big, you know, jump out of an airplane with a parachute. Whatever the thing may be, they're just going to take bigger risks. They also might not procrastinate as much. Why? They only have 364 days left. Let's not lose a day. Let's not lose a day where we could do something amazing because we have a very limited amount of time left. And also, they're going to reprioritize things in their lives if they know they only have a year left. They're probably going to reprioritize their family towards the top of the list if it wasn't there originally. They might prioritize this, that, or this. Things will change. And here's the point. What if you found out you only have one year left to live? In a spiritual sense, what would you change? How would you live differently? I mean, think about your fears. Would you kind of dismiss your fears that you once had? You know, maybe you were tentative about talking about your faith with your friends, your co-workers. You know, because sometimes it can go wrong, and then you get judged because of it, or you might lose a friend over it. Is it a risk you're willing to take? Is it a risk to share God's love? It doesn't seem like it should be, but it is for a lot of people because we don't know how they're going to react. If you only have one year left to live, I have a feeling you'd push those fears aside and you'd say, you know what, what do I have to lose? Let's show people how much I love God. Do you think you procrastinate as much with God? I have a feeling that would kind of stop too. I think a lot of people are good-intentioned Christians. 
And what I mean is, we have all the best intentions to do all these great things for the Lord. The problem is they usually stay at good intentions. And they never kind of go into, you know, they don't go into action. I have a feeling if you found out you have a limited amount of days left, I think you put these things into action. I think you dive into Scripture. You'd want to soak up as much as humanly possible in those last few months just so you could get to know our God as good as possible so you could prepare yourself for the next step after that. Or maybe perhaps God has called you in a certain way. And you don't know what that way is. You're still trying to figure it out. you got two options. One, this is really hard. I think I'm going to do it some other time. Or two, this is really hard yet important. I'm going to figure out what God is calling me this year. And what if you reprioritize your life and push God up to the top? And in every conversation you had, and in every action you had, and in your thoughts, you honored the Lord. I bet if you knew your days were limited, and you wanted to show God how much He mattered to you, you could do it. But the question is, What's going to push you to reprioritize your spiritual life? To stop procrastinating in your spiritual life? To push aside your doubts and your fears so you can really serve the Lord in your spiritual life? God willing, we all have more than a year left. But I'd like to pretend that we don't. Just so we feel that fire behind us. Where we feel we need to change some of the things we're doing to show God how important He is. And to show other people how loving our God is. I mean, if you only had one year left to live, wouldn't you dive in the Scriptures? Wouldn't you forgive people you haven't been able to forgive yet? Wouldn't you share your faith with those around you? Wouldn't you really deepen your prayer life to a really meaningful level? Perhaps trying to seek out God's will? And wouldn't you consider completely surrendering your life to God. Perhaps once again, if you've strayed, or perhaps for the first time, at all. I think we need to live that kind of year in 2012. And God willing, there's many more years afterwards. That's great. But let's pretend there's not. What kind of a spiritual impact would this church have on the community? What kind of a spiritual impact would this have in your families? What kind of a spiritual impact would this have in your own souls? I think God would transform you. I think God would do great things in your lives. And I think God would show you just how big He is if you show God just how much you're willing to love Him. One last thought on this, and we have a video to cover it. Would you please watch one of the screens?
please pray with me. Heavenly Father, I ask that you hear the cries of everybody in their hearts. Lord, we have a feeling inside us that we want to make changes. Lord, we have a feeling inside us that we're not satisfied where we are with you right now. Lord, perhaps we're being called in different directions to pray more, to read the scriptures more, to respond to you in a whole new and exciting way. Lord, I ask that you give us the courage and the strength to truly walk out of this room changed and transformed and convicted that we can be more spiritually meaningful and purposeful in the coming year. God, put your arms around us all as we make this decision to change ourselves into a better image that you have in store for us. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen.